Margie Worthington podcast all day. All day. Dream by night. <laughs> Don't buy me a drink. Just give me 10 bucks. Yeah, all day. <laughs> Go down to the strip club with your floppy disk and turn it into a hard drive. Yeah, right. You'll get fucking thrown out by a big Tony. <laughs> We're here to name names and make people feel more ashamed for shit that they're not proud of. Don't blow it. Keep it simple. Count your money. No, oh, whatever it is. <laughs> Hey, how you doing? Welcome to the Marky Worthington Comedy Podcast. A quick intro before we get into the show. This is episode 89 with uh, Dan Hawcroft and Joel Green. Uh, Dan was the uh, tour manager for the band Motorhead, uh, and he talks about that. This is a swap cast between Canberra Metalheads and Marky Worthington Comedy Podcast. I run both of them and figured that uh, this is a really good interview and I wanted to share it on both platforms. Head on over to Canberra Metalheads and check out my other podcasts. But um, until then, we'll get into it. And a quick side note, I did actually mention a shout out to Market Meats for hooking up the uh, interview. I mentioned it in the um in the beginning of the show how this came about but i have since been paid with one lamb lamb chop so thank you very much for the payment on the hookup for this and the shout out um so cheers thanks everyone and let's get into it Welcome to Canberra Metalheads. This is a very special episode. Um, this um, opportunity came up and I was like, hey, why wouldn't you take this amazing chance to uh, get someone on the show, which we wouldn't normally be able to chat to. Uh, welcome to the show. You know me, Marky Worthington. Um, and we've got Joel from Witch Goal and uh, also join here with yourself. Uh, interview, in, introduce yourself, mate. Oh, okay. My name's Dan. My name's Dan, Dan Holcroft. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was a, a roadie for many, many, many years. Yep. Yeah. Roadie for... Uh, it's a motorhead primarily yep. um, for about eight years. Uh, did a lot of stuff with Nick Oliveri as well. Yep. Um, and a lot of UK bands that most people have probably never heard of. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I mean, what what a fucking dodgy intro there. Just throw it over to you to introduce yourself. What sort of host am I? <laughs> uh, <laughs> just like, all right, well, I'll sit back and you just run the show from here. It seems yeah. like you've got it sorted. But no, thanks heaps for being on the show, mate. And speaking of Le- Nick Oliveri, we had him on the show as well. Ah, so did. when he came yeah. through here with um, his side project uh, with the... Um, Mondo Genera. The, that's right yeah came through um through canberra interviewed him in the green room at the basement and it was one of the episodes that got pulled from the radio because he said i love a venue that can keep you full of piss and they were like you can't promote drinking on the radio so we had to pull it um but yeah that was good man it was uh yeah good good time to get people on the show and and get get people like yourself man i'll tell people at, at home how this came about yeah, so fucking run. Yeah, quick yeah. quick shout out to one of my buddies so i i go to um i'll give him a shout out market meets in belcon and they're really good um there you go beat and you've paid for he gives me 10 percent discount next time i shop now seniors discount because i gave him that no yeah, just like... joking there's no financial back end i don't even get a fucking lamb chop out of this anyways <laughs> um no so he um he said to me he's like yeah, the people at home just fucking nearly puked because of uh, motion sickness because that camera nearly slipped off the table um hey don't watch this hungover people you'll fucking <laughs> yeah. fall off your chair um so uh we should have done the star trek thing though oh. yeah, yeah yeah exactly <laughs> the magic of editing yeah. um so anyway um he uh he said to me you're on a metal podcast you might want to speak to one of my regulars here um he, speak speak to dan and see if he wanted to do the podcast he runs a he he run he did an episode and he's got a book coming out with uh, called God's PA and I was like holy shit I've listened to that before this because Jamie Joster from Hatebreed in his um, podcast gave it a shout out so I downloaded the episode back when it came it was like twenty I think around I heard it around twenty eighteen it might have come out yeah, around then. Like, yeah um and uh yeah listen to the episode and i was like man this, this is really cool that like you know you hear a bit of behind the scenes a lot of people want to speak to the band members and yeah. a lot of the time the the best person to talk about the um the whole the whole scenario would be the people behind the band yeah, yeah so that was really good there so shout out Thank for bead for hooking me up and um getting getting it to this far man yeah totally like it's it's random right so i think um originally 
like I, I, and it sounds crazy to say, but I've lost a lot of weight doing keto, a keto diet. Mm. And so I go and see Bede every fucking week, week yeah. in, week out, and buy the same bag of meat that yeah, I've bought right. now for about three years. Right? Yeah. It's the same shopping list. And every time I go in now, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll just have that. And I think, and, it, and it's the same shit I buy, right? Yeah. He, he could just fucking put it together. But yeah, he shout out to Bede. <laughs> yeah, he's good, ago. man. I had dinner with him the other night. We yeah, went out to a restaurant, the steakhouse, and he's looking at the cuts on the wall, and he's like, oh, they fucked that up. <laughs> <laughs> like they're telling him the things. I said, yeah, this is it. the thing about going out with a butcher he'll be like this is a class six not a class nine wagyu will really you fucking charge me for this yeah, shit yeah, yeah. but he's so polite and, and quiet that he wouldn't sort of say that but he'll like say it to you just to let yeah, you know yeah, that totally. like he knows yeah. but he won't tell the waiter you know what i mean <laughs> so, it's so delightful. Much on the keto because my, my whole family's been on it for a, a while and i've only really just kind of gone off it but my old man like lost 17 kilos or something he's like 80. yeah and now yeah. it's unbelievable how quick once you get into that whole process yeah. oh totally right like i'm such a creature of habit right and we'll probably touch on that in a bit but like um but i think like yeah. For me, I've gone through this real fucking process of swapping out my bad habits for good habits, yeah, right? right? And and it's made me realize that I'm just a creature of habit, but they were all bad at one point, yeah, right? Yeah. And so I've slowly tried to fucking swap them out. And one of them was my diet. And so I, I think overall, from my heaviest to what I'm at now, I've lost 42 kilos. Holy right? shit, that's yeah, amazing. Because I was, kilos. yeah, like by the time I stopped touring and, and like, and all, I was a fucking wreck. Yeah. Like an absolute wreck. Like I'd, Yeah, you know, yeah. I've, well, it must be hard keeping it, you know, Staying healthy when you're on the road, it must be one of the hardest. Oh, things. it's fucking impossible. Yeah. <laughs> like, and it's, you know, even we, we obviously like, you know, with my, we travel with caterers and all of these things. So you're set up to be able to, to do it, but it still doesn't happen, right? Yeah. Like, um, because other things come and yeah. kind of embed. And, like <laughs> you, I said, it's, yeah. you mentioned this in your, in your podcast, um, God's PA. I'm going to keep saying that over and over again. Yeah, so, it's so many times I actually thought of all the multiple meanings of God's PA. You know what I mean? Like, because I'm thinking of PA like at a gig, you know, the public announcement system yeah, yeah. and then personal assistant. Yeah, and like, there's right. so many cool double meanings for that name. It's a, it's a good thing. Yeah. But um, you were saying about like, when you got off tour, it was like, fuck, like sometimes you think to yourself, did that happen? Like, did that, some of those stories, like, did that actually, was that real? Like, it seems like yeah, such a yeah. distant memory. Oh, completely. Yeah. You're absolutely right. And I think like the life that, that I have now like as much as it's you know like it's pretty fucking mundane mm. like I don't really I think back to it it's almost like a little bit of a blur like yeah. a little bit of a dream or a little bit of a flashback and, and some of them is actual flashbacks but like, yeah. <laughs> but, like, um, but yeah you kind of that's like, your you, Vietnam yeah exactly yeah yeah yeah, yeah totally. that's exactly <laughs> mate you summed it up perfectly <clears throat> it's my fucking Vietnam <laughs> but like um yeah, you kind of think back to it now and you just go, you know what, like, and, and I bite my tongue on a lot of stuff, right? Like, I, I, I think, oh, you know, because so, in general conversation, like, you know, it's basically an exchange of stories and it most of the time. And like, somebody will say something, I'd be like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And in my head, I'll be like, oh, I'm not even going to fucking bother talking about that. And I stop yeah. myself from talking about stuff because half the time people will either go, that's pure fucking bullshit. Yeah, or yeah. Or they'll, they'll just be like, yeah, you're just tooting your own horn. You yeah, well, I mean? how did you... um? What? Why Australia? Why? Why? Out of all the spots to retire after, why? Like, I'm not saying it's a bad choice. No, I'm just I saying, what fucking retired? <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I have so random stuff. Must have paid well. Yeah. Right. Totally, yeah. Um, right, randomly, um, I kind of, uh, well, not kind of. My missus is Australian. Oh right, cool. So yeah. I met my missus through uh, a guy called Ed Burning, Ed mm -hmm. the Duck, um, who is a was a fellow tour manager he's now a tour bus driver yep um so he's living the easy life and then um yeah we met so he was originally i think when we met he was working with megadeth mm -hmm. but prior to that he worked with the uk punk band and this is how insidious the uk punk scene is yeah, yeah. um he was living with uh, a very small punk band around fat wreck chords yep. called goober patrol okay um and we used to stay at their house and I met my missus through there. She's originally from Wagga, moved to the UK when our parents split up and got yeah. divorced. Um, and then when we had our daughter, we wanted our daughter to go to school in Australia. Yeah. Um, so made the move out here. Um, but I came here in 2012, originally on the Soundwave tour with the Killswitch Engage guys. Awesome. To, uh, and I was here for that. I'd seen Lamb of God kill, uh, and um, Killswitch. Right. I oh, know, Lamb of God and... Um, 
and in flames black delia murder here in canberra 2012 oh, okay yeah, yeah a side nice. wave yeah. at the, u- yeah, the university yeah okay yeah so yeah. we did uh randy threw a so. water bottle at my brother's head yeah <laughs> and we did another we came back as well with we time we, we've t- yeah what was it oh time to grace as well okay one. yeah which was adam jesse and it was before jesse had rejoined kill switch and it was yeah uh, yeah and uh, awesome. so we came out and we we hit up everywhere really and i just fell in love with the place like i love it like it's yeah it's yeah how, how, why canberra like if if you're Mrs. was from Wagga. Uh, did, did she know Canberra? No disrespect to any of your, your Wagga listeners, but uh, I am not going to fucking live in Wagga. It's gone. It's like, it's gone. I do have one listener in Wagga. Oh, hey, Dane, he doesn't mean it. Yeah, so I'm sorry, mate. No, no, <laughs> honestly, right? Thirsty Crow Brewery, great place. Love no, it, I'm right? Not, Been I'm, there, smashed it. It's, um, yeah, yeah. But it's, you know, in terms of opportunities and, and what I wanted to do and stuff like that, I needed to be somewhere quite big. Um, and also, she also has some other family that lived out at Gugong okay. and stuff. Um, and so we they, they had a little farm there. So when we first got here, we literally arrived here with nothing. Like we lived at the farm at Gugong for a while and slowly built ourselves up. Mm. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's why Canberra. That's why Canberra. Um, you know, um, it's it's a great place. I, I, yeah, I, I like it. Yeah, what, why? Um, what what got you into managing? Like you mentioned on the on the previous podcast I listened to um, with yourself, where you're like, you know, I remember seeing Lammy and Young Ones when you were watching TV when you're a kid. And then what takes you from watching Lammy on TV to managing him from 2005 to 2011? Did you say? Yeah, that? yeah, it was, oh. yeah. 2005 was my first tour, kind of. Yeah, 2011 midway on so yeah late 2011 yeah i just checked my notes i got that right let's see, see some of this yeah, works good work. maybe you made a right choice by choosing the the australian education system yeah, yeah exactly hey? yeah, yeah, yeah totally i thought right. I'd, i thought yeah, i'd do yeah. the opposite i thought after yeah. you saying it's good and then you hearing me read out loud you'd be like fuck we're going back somewhere else <laughs> but maybe wagga would be better yeah, after yeah, all you know yeah. less kids more more focus on each individual student yeah yeah, yeah, yeah but anyway um so what was the process to get you from um, where you were to to um, personal assistant to Lemmy failing at school, yeah, yeah. <laughs> opportunity, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah no, nah, um, is that a callback to what I just said? Yeah, 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 exactly, right? what is, yeah I'm meant just, to be the comedian. Yeah, yeah, What's going yeah, on? Yeah, exactly, right? Yeah, yeah, prime poster boy for the Australian education system. Now I'm a prime, prime I'm more poster, of a poster boy for the boy failure for... of the UK education system. I'm more of a poster boy um, for comedy in this. Yeah, room, that's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was uh, it was through a band called Cap Down, really. Yeah. Um, which was, you know, uh, like kind of, it was called Scardcore, which is okay. a very niche market, yeah. right? So it was a mix of like hardcore, like genuine, like old school, youth of today, Gorilla Biscuits type hardcore, sure. and like Scar, punk stuff, like Operation Ivy and yeah. bands like that, right? And they'd meshed it really, really well. Um, and I'd been meddling around with my own bands and stuff like that, but like I'd never, I always enjoyed rehearsals far more than playing live, sure. right? Um, I'm quite an anxious cat, really. Like, I'd, I'm quite introverted. I hate people fucking, like, being on stage, people looking at me and shit like that, right? Which is why I've always kind of thrived being behind the scenes. Sure. Like, uh, like even now in the role that I do now, I'm very much a logistics person and I'm very much a, like, you know, I like to facilitate shit and then sit back and watch and go, oh, that worked well. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Um, and so I was putting on gigs, um, lying to a venue about my age uh, <laughs> and started putting on gigs. And... <laughs> And put them on, and uh, a few times, and we became really, really good friends. Like um, at the time, like we had uh, a huge mutual love of weed, yeah, um, and very in-depth love of weed of like you know different strains and different. Uh, you know, take different that strains. radio station, you fucks. Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah so. no, actually, they got yeah. me to where I am, but <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and, and yeah, so we were actually genuinely bonded on that, and a cool. love of like old school hardcore as well, sure. right? Um, and so at that time it was, you know, growing up in the northeast of England, they were from the Midlands, um, and they they were blowing up. Their their first album, Civil Disobedience, went okay. uh like kind of blew up the UK punk scene. Like, yeah, yeah. And unintentionally and almost unaware of what they'd created. Sure. So they were doing like within that album they were doing um, you know, ska punk better than ska punk bands that were trying the hardest, right? They yeah. were doing hardcore better than the hardcore kids who were all like, you know, really loving it and really going for it and all posi call but they were doing it better without even thinking about mm-hmm. uh that they were doing like old school punk stuff right they were doing like uh 
drum and bass, bits of reggae and stuff like that, that they were pulling all these influences and then mashed it all into one album and it just blew up and it was almost like with ease. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Frustratingly yeah. with ease as yeah, well. Yeah. Like, there was a lot of bands were like, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, like, like but, people saying that Motorhead is like the best, like without realising it, they've fucking thrown it over all the punk bands by exactly, being more yeah, exactly punk that, than yeah, punk yeah, bands. Yeah, you're absolutely yeah, right. It's a similar yeah. sort of situation, right? Yeah. Where they'd like, you know, they'd wrote all the songs and they'd, they'd, they didn't know how good they were. Yeah. Right. What and, year is this around? 98 99 yeah something like that um and then i put them on and, and obviously with that and also pairing it with them like a huge fucking work ethic like mm. they were i think this one year was like and this is on like 50 pounds a night so the equivalent of what 75 80 bucks a night they were on and they did something like 258 shows in one year and they're just mm. and they're all support shows it's not headline shows yeah, they're like serious yeah attitude. and they're in a, they're in like a shitty old van and they'd like talk just bang 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 mm. and i put them on and they were like do you know what you should come on tour with us and i literally fucking packed a bag and left that night yeah and right. i didn't speak to my parents probably for the next 10 years like yeah, right. i think my mum and dad went out well in full transparency the next time i actually got in touch with them was to say that you're going to be grandparents Oh shit! So yeah, yeah, um, yeah, and like so, I went off with toured with them for a long time and worked my way up from driving the van um, to selling, helping sell a bit of merch to then yeah. being a guitar roadie to then like being a tour manager mm. to then like them going from basically being in this crappy old van to being on nightliner tour buses mm. and doing full European tours. So you learn your awesome. skills every set of the way, right? Um, and then, uh, and tell me if I'm rambling, Matt. I have a tendency to fucking ramble on. Dude, but like, go for it. Uh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never, I've never seen a car with a handbrake off going down the hill, right. and, and actually enjoyed watching it so much as as you talk. Oh, man. Thanks, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's, man, that's my life, right? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm just sitting I am going, nothing if not a cautionary tale, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, um, <laughs> just like the car, at least it's going to be a good story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the singer Jack, he uh, announced, he basically called everybody in to the. Uh, and I remember it fucking vividly. It was in Wolverhampton Civic Wolfram Hall. Yeah. And he called everybody. He was like, oh, I need to have a meeting with everybody. And everybody was like, oh, fuck, what's this, right? Because they weren't the sort of band to have meetings, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, punk know, band they, doesn't yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? They were the sort of band who would com- combine right? their per diems to maybe buy some weed, and that's what the meeting <laughs> would be about. But, like, not not like, oh, I'm we six, need to have a meeting. Six yeah. pay short. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's right. what the yeah. meeting was yeah, about. Totally yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, And announced that he was going to be a dad. And was like, look, I'm going to be a dad. Like, I'm going to have to wind this down. Like, da 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 da. And uh, you know, and everybody had to kind of deal with it. Everyone's, you know, you go, you 50% stuck, 50% like, well, fuck, what's next, right? Yeah. Um, and the next thing for me was um, a band called Kasabian. So I, and and they're huge in the UK. I, don't, I mean, I don't know if they're particularly big over well, here. Well, I know they were big over there. Was, yeah, they were they, fucking they huge, a, right? They made a mark here, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's how the Australian music scene works. We just know where other... Where, where stuff's where, doing well. Yeah, right? where yeah, something's exactly, going well. Good to hear that you're doing well in X amount of countries. Yeah, totally like, right. We just yeah, sit yeah, back. Yeah. It's just like you were saying with yeah. your organising. We in The Australian metal scene just likes to sit back and know that people are doing well somewhere else. Um, <laughs> so yeah like that was for, and, and the thing is it was so do you know what it sounds really harsh but like it was a shitty time but very good for my for my resume yeah right okay. yeah and it was a shitty time because they weren't the big band that everybody thinks of at that time yeah, they right. were it was almost like a step back to the band to the to the we were, we were in a van right yeah so we're traveling around we're doing all these shows with cooper temple claws and i was with them for a little while and they were my first experience of bad management Mm. Right, and yeah, right. which unfortunately is fucking prevalent in the music industry. Like, sure, it's, it's it's everywhere, right? Like, the Anvil story. Did you watch that documentary? Yeah, yeah. Those poor guys like getting fucked. Like they go through Europe and they're just like trying to pay them with goulash and shit. Yeah, exactly. You know, right. like yeah, just yeah, give yeah, them food. Yeah. It's so funny to see that clip of uh, most metalheads have probably seen this, but my favorite part from that show talking about bad management mm. is just where Lips is just like, I don't want fucking goulash. I want money. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Some European so dude's trying to say yeah, he's yeah. got a free meal. Man, I was, I want, do you remember Mad, Mad Dog and Cut Loose from that movie? Yeah, I yeah. I went yeah. out on the beers with them one night. Oh, shit. They it were meant to come here hectic. to Australia, but they yeah. can the can the tour. Um, I actually heard recently someone sum it up. It's hit from the comedy scene, but it's transferable to the yeah, music yeah. scene. Australia is just where you go to keep your Australian fans happy, and if you can break even and keep your fans, then it's good. When you, if you're a UK or American band, yeah. that unless you're like 
you know, doing sold out fest like the recent not fest and stuff yeah. pretty much unless it's at that scale to come over from another country to australia is not financially viable for a lot of bands yeah for sure. so the ones that do come out that's why everyone should like support them because they're like you know we know what you're going through to get here and put on this show for us yeah. oh totally yeah it's a huge financial commitment yeah. right so, and from flights to you know immigration and all of these things that you know draw public don't see the amount of like work that has to go in just to get in visas to tour in Australia was crazy. And then you've got all you're getting all your equipment here and then the logistics of the huge land distance between major cities, right? Like it's when we were flights. doing Soundwave, yeah, it's all flights, right? We would come off stage, all the gear would be packed up and you'd put it there and somehow it would magically be there in the next show, right? Yeah. Fuck knows how it got there. It yeah. was probably all freighted to an airport and it did all this stuff, right? Yeah, like yeah. um but you know that I think Soundwave is a prime example, right? I think financially they ended up just being fucked yeah right? yeah and I, that's clearly i don't think it was intentional in any way i don't already know the huge background behind it but other than it I so think he, he threw it on a lot of toes he did yeah so, sometimes you have like you said bad management but also some people are just bad at communication and, and yeah. maintaining relationships yeah totally right yeah i think, I think he tried to a bit of big nerding wasn't it he tried to get metallica and they'd only just been here yeah he offered them a million a show for seven shows or something so they went all right yeah yeah but yeah. there's no need to drop an extra seven mil. That yeah, that's it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. Sometimes people just um, will um, sell stories to get people over here, and then in turn tread on toes. You know. Yeah, yeah. So unfortunately, that just hap happens to be the way of it. Um, yeah. And but I think, I think it, you're absolutely right. Yeah. There is that stratification of levels, though, right? Yeah. There's the bands that come here of like yay fuck we're going to australia and it's a complete thing you know we, this is how much money we're going to lose doing it yeah. and, and they take that on the chin and they, they understand that and they're like yeah that's fine we'll do it and it's not fine but they're like you know we've we've almost factored that into our costs sure. for the year right yeah. yeah and hopefully we'll make some money back on merch and blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. like for me i always i've always been one of those things that, like, no matter what show it is i try and buy a match something from the match right because sure. that's what fucking helps these days yeah right? unfortunately yeah, you know yeah my I mean? missus is running out of shirts to, like she's got too many shirts to sleep in yeah because i'll just get two at every Everything. like and the thing is there's none in her size so uh, it's like two larges or two 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 or two xls yeah, yeah. so it's like yeah one that i can wear out in public and one that you only want to wear to bed because it's too big for you you know what i mean yeah, so totally like, right. yeah. it's like yeah, yeah. I'm, like 14 shirts to wear to bed tonight you know yeah. because i'm just always buying merch and being like here you go you know take this yeah I'll you know because i'm right. support this is my way of supporting <laughs> yeah so uh, when i did uh uni my dissertation that i did was on um live streaming and downloads and its effects on the live music industry oh right? yeah okay. and basically you can sum it up and i did a full fucking dissertation but you can sum it up with buy some fucking match yeah right yeah it's basically because bands now are struggling and struggling they're constantly on tour because they're having to make this money that they're now not getting from record sales which yeah. means that they only have a finite amount of time because they can't afford to go into the studio to write new songs to create new albums and it has this huge knock-on effect right Fuck yeah but basically buy some fucking merch and Mo motorhead had a mad range of merch or has a mad range of merch how did you find like coordinating that with gigs and things like that um so uh, i think when i was with them a lot of it was handled by a third party bravado okay um i'm not sure who runs them these days i know yeah. they did some stuff with emp man yeah i don't see like lemmy fucking boxing up shit and no, posting it out no to no no but it was <laughs> you know what he, he did have a huge fucking oversight on it Every, oh uh, yeah part, part of my role was taking things to him and saying oh they're you know this has been suggested what do you think cool right and a lot of the time he you know he'd have some very blunt feedback on it <laughs> like, <laughs> to, tell us something sorry. about like a story of that have you ever had any just things you thought were great ideas and he's just gone like and shot it out of the air do you know what without wanting to fucking sound thingy like a lot of the time me and him are on the same page good like Excellent. um and, which is why we work quite well together right i think and it's something that i've touched on in the book really it's like this the motorhead crew was very very well handpicked right yeah in the way that for example there was eddie rocher who was very business minded he obviously cared about everybody but he was very business minded and he was very good at the logistics of that i'm very much like very much a left-wing socialist right i'm a people person like mm. i love people to be happy and i love all of these things like that and i love to t take care of of logistics as well as feelings right which yeah. sounds really fucking fluffy but it, <laughs> but it's true but when you mesh that together you it's get that punk rock, yeah exactly <laughs> right you get that kind of holistic picture right where um and so there'd be times where i'd bring you know i think i'm trying to think of a good example right 
the merch company wanted to do uh, like these little fucking statues of Lemmy, right? And right. you could sell them and da da da. And it was him and his bass guitar and his microphone. And it was almost like, you know, you get like the, you can go to uh, like a comic book shop and you can get like a bust of Batman's head or you yeah, know, stuff yeah. like that, right? And we took one to him and he looked at it and he was be like, Ugh. I'm like, oh, because his first thing he'd be that, he'd always ask me, oh, what do you think about it? And I'd be yeah. like, to be honest, mate, I kind of think you're that anti statue. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, nobody sure. wants that, right? You, you, and, and he completely agreed. And then another time, there was some some kind of, uh, it was a motorhead shirt and it was a white shirt. And he was like, motorhead shirts don't come in white. Rock and roll shirts don't come in white. Fuck Do you yeah. know what I mean? And it's like, well, yeah, you're absolutely right. Do you know what I mean? And and he was very much over that kind of, let's keep this motorhead. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? The brand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And do you know what? Like, since it's passing, unfortunately, you've seen that widen a little bit. Sure. Do you yeah, know what I mean? A lot. A lot, right? Yeah, there's um, a lot of things now where you sort of look and go, you know, those, what are those little pop things? Yeah, you know, yeah. But they have the big heads yeah, and the yeah. little bodies. Yeah, and, all this shit. Know, but there's stuff. even fucking stuff where, like, you know, I, I get Instagram kind of fucking targeted ads all the time. And I got some the other day for Motorhead running shorts, right? Yeah. And I was just like, what the fuck? Yeah. It's like, do you know what? Not only did Lemmy never fucking run anywhere, right? Yeah. Like, uh, like I wouldn't have fucking trusted him to run a raffle, never mind a fucking yeah. raffle. You know what I mean? Like, and, and it was just like, and it comes up and it's like, yeah, built for speed. And all shit's like, wrong sort of speed, my friend. Uh, yeah. Like, these aren't fucking, do you know what I mean? Like, that's, yeah. And you see this shit and you're just like, built for fuck speed. me. Like, it's, yeah. yeah. They could have just at least made it more motorhead and said, built for speed, not heroin. Yeah, you exactly, know what I mean? right? Something you like that. I mean? yeah, Something yeah. a little bit more Lemmy. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just, yeah. Just, you look at the um, Motorhead England design, you know. You think, it's iconic, right? It's iconic, but yeah. how, how many bootlegs have there been of it? You know what I mean? Mm. I kind of often wondered how... Uh, how Maybe you would have felt about the fact them. that... Yeah, well, it's great, but even the bootleg side of it, we're just people... Loved them, yeah. Yeah, really? Yeah, I used to... The, 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 sort of on tours, really I'd go out and get one of everything from the... I just got to uh, plug the charger into this okay. one. Oh, good. So that means I can get a beat. When I interviewed Nick Oliveri, yep. he'd just gotten off the flight to Australia. Yep. So he was, he's like midway through smoking a cigarette in the green room inside. Like yep. he's like, he's like, it'll be fine to smoke in here, won't it? And I'm like, I can't say no to Nick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's just midway through the interview. He's like having a beer and he just like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally sitting, lucky I didn't film it, um, but I'm literally like. Ah, uh, Nick. Um, so, uh, how do how do you find Australia, mate? And he's just, yeah, good. <laughs> just kept, 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 so kept good. in character. Yeah, 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 yeah. Such a legend. Yeah, well, a legend. yeah, I was just like, fuck, that's awesome. And I got a guy backstage meet and greet um, as part of a competition I ran here. You know, yeah, the, yeah. the guy that runs the promotion for that was like give away a meet and greet, like to promote the gig, and uh, he was just expecting to go out and meet him. And he's like, do you want a beer or something, man? They end up like drinking and hanging out yeah, in the yeah, green room yeah. for like the rest of the night. Like from when they finished the gig until they went home, he was hanging, they let him hang out with the crew and shit. I'll tell you, Nick yeah. is such a nice bloke, right? And I think when I started kind of, well, I kind of, the, the, how I ended up working but with, with Nick was actually supporting Motorhead and was, he was the springboard for me, ended up working for Motorhead, right? Mm. Um, but I got offered the tour through a mate of mine who double booked and... I ended up working with, with with Nick, but I was so fucking worried that first day because I'd had so many bad reports about him. He's like, oh, he's a fucking lunatic. He's yeah. a fucking nightmare, all this stuff. The nicest, genuest, like fucking most amenable, most intelligent, like kind of interesting bloke I'd met in such a long time back then, right? Um, uh, to be able to just, you know, blow out with him and chat about old hardcore music to just mm. fucking da 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 And he was good as gold, right? And I think a lot of those war stories that i'd heard about him had been completely fucking misconstrued yeah Do you know what yeah. i mean like or, or we're in a place where i could see you know he's almost like you know and, and i i openly admit it when i if i'm backed into a corner i get a bit fucking belligerent right right i think a lot of people do that and i think maybe he would been in that situation sure you know what i mean where he's like Do you know what i'm just I, I can fuck with this so i will fuck with this if yeah you're gonna push back yeah. at me i'll push back at you sure but when i encountered him in on the journey of fucking life as it were like he was such a nice laid back dude and yeah. still is to this day right um dangerous to go out drinking with yeah but a very nice dude it's like that <laughs> story about um i forgot who it was with the um 
I remember in the Lemmy doc, they're like, yeah, what, I went in to do some recording with Lemmy, brought in a bottle of Maker's Mark yeah. and um, just handed me, handed it to me. And by the end of it, we drank and we drank so much, we didn't do any recording. I went to hospital, alcohol poisoning, and he just continued with his night. Yeah. I was like, "Fucking hell!" <laughs> and then there's that one. I think one of one of the got one of the um, other interview people they interviewed said that they were like, "Oh, uh, he's like, do you want a jack?" And he just hand, thinking, "Oh yeah, I'll just give him this fifth of jack, and then we'll just share it." So he takes a squeak <laughs> and hands it to his mate. And yeah. he looks over and Lem's opening up another Jack and he means a whole bottle each yeah. instead yeah, of yeah, like yeah. a swig from one bottle. <laughs> yeah, just, just like so, and so genu genuous, uh, genu generous. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Ge genuine yeah. and genu genuous. Yeah. And I'm just like, what did I just make like four different fucking words? Like, <laughs> like I've never seen an English guy so happy to let the language just fall off just the fucking face fucking, of the yeah, earth. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally See, right. he's yeah, like, yeah. we gave this language to you fuckers. You can bring it out to Australia <laughs> yeah, no, no. and turn it into this shit. Yeah. yeah. Um, but no, uh, it just really. <laughs> um, hey, speaking of which, so, so you can, you can, I've done interviews in the past. And sometimes the Mr. YouTube warrior gets behind the keyboard and says like, this dickhead just interviewed himself for most of the time. This is probably one of the first times I've been able to be matched with my ability to talk. So it's really good to like, you know, yeah. a lot of bands. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm a complete verbose prick. Don't worry about uh, well, a lot of bands are quite quiet people. You know what I mean? So like, yeah. it's good to get a like someone that's more on the publicist side of things to try and like be more of a talker, you know? So, um, but yeah, one of the people said that and I was thinking to myself, yeah, fair enough. Um, but I'm aware of it. It's the worst thing. Like I can do something and I'm like, I prefer sometimes to be completely blissfully ignorant. Like I know that I talk too much, but I prefer to let people talk as well. So I'm like this mismatch of like too much of this and not enough of this. And I know what's happening the whole time, but that comes from like my comedy background and things. And one link to comedy and motorhead is Jim Norton's Down and Dirty 2008. He put out this comedy special where Lemmy DJed it. So, oh, yeah, so if anyone hasn't seen this, if you're a fan of comedy and Motorhead, Jim Norton, who's a um, New York comedian, put out a comedy special with a, a bunch of different... It was a series. He had about three or four comedians per episode, and there's about five episodes. And he actually had Lemmy do the sound for the gig as a guest dj where was it um this is at uh near boston i think one of the rooms there i don't remember i yeah, don't know 100 okay. percent. but he had guys like jim jeffries um patrice o'neill bill yeah, burr okay. when they in 2008 before yeah, they blew right. up um and jim norton did the the uh, mc for it and he was literally just throwing it to let he's like oh take us away lemmy and lemmy'd be up there doing his doing his thing oh, yeah. yeah between so it was called yeah, it was yeah it was yeah, called it, it was called down and dirty yeah okay um that's what, like him the, djing tunes that for comedians ah, so yeah, like yeah, yeah. he was doing the fucking eclectic music so test, right? well he used to yeah, put crazy yeah stuff. yeah he used to put the music on to bring them out and play them off he was just sitting there playing the the house music yeah okay so yeah, yeah. yeah jim was throwing it to lemmy to to <laughs> to do the sound you yeah. know and i don't actually know how much of that was also managed behind the scenes whether he was a character there to do that yeah or whether but yeah, knowing probably. what you've said about lemmy i feel like he would have had a lot to do with it you know and i, oh, I feel he was, like yeah he's very controlling like it, and he was very like that sounds like a bad thing to say very controlling but very self-aware and very aware of how he is represented and very aware of controlling how he's interpreted right yeah which is a really healthy thing for an artist right? yeah yeah um, so yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not seeing that. I'd like to see that. But yeah, no, in my mind, it was when you said him DJ, and I'm like, that'd be the worst fucking thing. I could yeah, oh, no, he, he wasn't He'd putting be like, on his tubers in the moonlight by the Bonzo <laughs> Dog Doo Dah Band. And... <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck is this? Well, that's actually but... a question that I that I um want that I had for the for the podcast. Um, what sort of music did Lamb listen to when he wasn't on tour? If he was just mm -hmm. chilling, what do you know? What sort of music he'd oh, like yeah. to put yeah. on? Yeah. So me and him originally bonded over the, his music test. Yeah, like so, Little Richard and stuff was in the doco. Is yeah, that, yeah. That sort so, of thing? you know, he loves stuff like Little Richard. The Downliner sect was one of his favourites, which is yeah. like a very small kind of like UK rock and roll band. Um, he loved Skunk and Nancy. 
Yep. He like one of his favorite bands, Evanescence. He really likes. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. He, you know, yeah. Um, he used to like say the Bonzo Dog Doodah Band, which I don't know if you've ever heard them. Are fucking amazing. <laughs> so basically, like, uh, <laughs> they're, 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 they're one of my favorite bands of all time now. And it was him who got me into them, right? And it's almost like every song was a different genre. From what era? Were From they? the 60s. Yeah, like right, really yeah. fucking tripped out, fucking <laughs> like, uh, they had a song called like, My my Brother Did the Noises for the Talkies. Uh, they had one that was Humanoid Boogie, which is about uh, robots trying to dance like humans. Um, <laughs> like they had one like, uh, You Done My Brain In. Um, yeah, so many fucking, My Pink Half of the Drain Pipe, which is about uh, the detached houses that you see in the UK where you know yeah. people look after their own little section of garden to the point that they've even painted half of a drain pipe yeah. the colour yeah, that they yeah. want and shit like that. Like really good fucking social commentary in terms of like that. <laughs> and um, one of the guys went on to be in Monty Python. So he was uh, originally in the Bonzo Dog Doo Da Band was called Neil Innes. Went yeah, on right. to be in the Ruttles, who was like, I don't know if you've ever seen yeah, that documentary. The Beatles yeah, the coming, Beatles documentary. Yeah, 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 yeah. with like Leggy oh, Man Batman. Oh, yeah, it's like, well, yeah. what do you like about them? It's like, the trousers. <laughs> like, um, like uh, Dark Nasty and stuff like that. It was so good. Um, he was a fan of Beatles as well. I see. Huge yeah, fan yeah, of the Beatles. Yeah. Huge, huge fan of the Beatles. And like, I, I like what um, he was... saw him at the Kevin, didn't he? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty full on. Yeah, so he, I think he was, he once told me like one of his first ever fucking things was carrying the guitar around for Eddie Kidd as well. Was it, Not Eddie Kidd, was it Eddie, it might be, was it Johnny Kidd and the Pirates? Eddie Kidd was the motorcycle stuntman. Might be Johnny Kidd and the Pirates. Yeah, yeah, right. But yeah, he was, I think back then, yeah, he saw him at the cabin. Um, and yeah, he's, yeah. Well, you, look he, his, you look at his resume, well, that and then working with Hendrix and yeah, yeah, yeah. the wildest, you know, you could just, that's what I was actually. I found reading the um, reading the the autobiography sort of. You just start getting into a story, and then it's over because he's. It's like it needed ten volumes in yeah. his life. Yeah, yeah. I totally right. So yeah. I sort of found that with the movie as well. It's just kind of it's just touching on something that you want to hear about, and then it's over because he's got yeah. to mention everything else he's done in his life. True. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I thought he was such a like you know. Um, it's, like, it's a really old fucking cliched adage, right? That, you know what, some people like, they can live 80 years and not live a day. Yeah, Do you know yeah. what I mean? Right? Yeah. But then there's some people who can live fucking, I don't know, 20 years and fucking live, live and embrace every fucking well, I've, I've followed right? him since a kid, you know, and I remember watching a docker when he was 40, and he's saying, you know, so when he's 40, I'm, I'm you know, 15 or something. So it's like, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm thinking 40's old. And he's going, oh, I could die tomorrow and I wouldn't care. I've had, I've had a hell of a life. And you sort of, you just, you believed it because you knew it. Yeah. <laughs> and he oh, had, totally, like, right? up yeah. to the age of 40, what he'd sort of crammed into that space of time. Yeah. Oh, totally. It was just, totally. just but like, I did, do you know what I did like? And it's, I'm kind of fucking going off on a bit of a tangent here, but like the, and, and it, uh, when you're talking about the movie, do you mean the one that Wes Oshowski and Greg Oliver did, the recent one? Like the one, well, not recent now, it's like what, 20... 2011. Yeah, 2011, yeah. okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So well, like, you're in it as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, so yeah. This, we'll talk about that towards the end because it was towards the end of the doco that um, you had more parts. I know. That, yeah. I don't know if you compared it to like how they edited it and all that sort of stuff. It, you're fairly early on, I think, just as a like part of the crew. And then at the end, they've got a couple of good little like clips of you actually interviewing. Yeah, and... so I, yeah, I had to be interviewed a few times for that because yeah. I was in full fucking transparency, a bit of a mess. Yeah. Um, I think I was interviewed in Norway. That didn't make it there. I think I did one at the Rainbow. That might have fucking done it. Rainbow wasn't in there, yeah, I don't yeah. think. Yeah. yeah, so I was up in there. Um, Where were you based the whole time you are working with Lemmy? Were you in America or were you the, doing... In the UK, but I used to spend a lot of... So, Weirdly, my head used to tour for 11 months of the year, pretty much in and out, right? And then... It's insane. Yeah, it's crazy, right? It's crazy. And it's then crazy. that one month of the year would be probably spent in the studio. So he would yeah. be busy 12 months of the year. So what I would do... It, for the first couple of tours, I stayed in the UK. I always had a pl an address in the UK. Yeah. But at the end of a tour, I'd be like, oh, you know, do you want to come stay in fucking LA with me? Yeah. And I'd be like, yeah, all right then. Um, or I'd be like, no, nah, I want to go home. And he did. They always taught me into, like, what the fuck do you want to do that for? And I'd be like, well... You know, want to see my missus? I oh, can see you next month. I'm like, all right, all right. Um, and so it's I so don't... funny to be on tour for eleven years and being like for eleven months out of the year and being like, why would you want to go home? Yeah, I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah. And see, this is like he had a completely like 
different mindset <laughs> and a different reality. And it was so funny to, to, and it goes back to what we were chatting about earlier about, you know, like when the, the alarm, the changing yeah, the clocks and things like that. That's a good like tour story. Yeah, yeah. 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 So like, you know, <laughs> on my, my first few days where he's basically, you know, thinking that I'm trying to pull one over on him. And it was almost, you know, he, he, I'd be doing his wake up calls and he'd be like, you know, you've changed the fucking clocks and da 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 da. Right? And I'd be like, no, I haven't looked like, like, down here. Well, you've changed that one as well. You've changed the one to the main. I'm like, I fucking haven't, right? It's such a different mindset. <laughs> and so you'd be like, oh, well, you know, I, I really want to go home. And, it, and, and he'd be like, well, well, you know, why? And I'd be like, well, why wouldn't I? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, why the fuck wouldn't I? Like, I've been wearing the same old stinking jeans for like fucking two months like all and my that's after around. they're in the bog in norway i forgot stories, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking, mate, i fucking forgot man you didn't read yeah yeah so um <laughs> i'll see if i can recount the story you tell me if i'm right or not oh, yeah, yeah, yeah this yeah. is what i remember of it so in the van it's early hours in the morning you're still traveling you're like let's go out i gotta go out for a piss it's middle of the night it's in norway it's snowing as shit and there's a pisser on the van but for whatever yeah, reason it was, it one, was yeah. worth going outside for yeah. gone outside look down feet are in a bog your shoes are gone in the in a in a puddle of muck yeah it was like a babbling brook like, like fucking in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> i don't know if that's the sign for a babbling brook but like there they go and like uh, it was i'll let you take it away from yeah, there i got yeah. a good start on it though, so yeah yeah it's a tall bus we've got a full fucking like toilet in there and everything and i don't even know like i don't even fucking really, really remember why but i'm like oh pull over pull over, pull over i need to run for a piss pitch black middle of fucking norway we've just done a show at the oslo spectrum and kind of run off when it's the thing i'm like, gonna run for a piss da, 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 da. i just went it was almost like a fast flowing like f river or babbling brook and it just blew my shoes off and i could just like dig, 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 dig. and i went back and i was like oh fuck and yeah i got to the venue the next day and i literally had to like go find a skate shop walk in there told them the story they thought it was fucking brilliant just put them on the guest list for the show like all this stuff like um oh, yeah it was mad it was mad but yeah i had some fucking good times on that tour, but just the like, idea of you going in in full like tour gear just with no shoes yeah like, exactly it's just that, so yeah. funny yeah totally yeah like um yeah no shoes and yeah it was it was mad but i, but I had some good time that yeah i got fucking I, I don't know if I'm, i've mentioned it previously but i got fucking knocked myself clean out on that and let me to fucking like so we were at this emp merch party in uh i can't remember what the fuck it's for slick still get somewhere like that and i'd already got into fucking trouble that night right um I mean, am, I, am I right to talk about fucking drugs on this? Yeah, go for oh, it. Yeah, 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 sweet, right. yeah. So, um, better we talk about yeah, it. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, yeah, exactly yeah right. you yeah. can do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah if right. anyone does drugs because of Canberra metalheads, you're a fucking <laughs> sheep, dude. <Yeah. laughs> yeah. If someone says Marky made me do it, then how about you go buy some fucking merch as well while yeah, you're at yeah, it? You know, right. if, you, if you're taking my word for it. Yeah, yeah. It's the, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah it's, anyway, yeah. Yeah, and so like. Um, it was this EMP merch party and I was like hanging out with the German promoter, like, what's his fucking name? I mean him had fucked off into this like fucking cubicle at the start and and like we're doing coke in there and this fucking security guard comes over the thing and he's like, I do not mind what you are doing, but this is the ladies' toilet. <laughs> like, I'm like, alright, fucking whatever. Like, so we both come out of there red faced or whatever. And it turns out that like, it's a free bar and I'm like, fucking brilliant and do my usual thing of like, oh amazing, I'm just gonna drink loads and loads of tequila. Yeah. Alright? Um, because it gets you pissed really fucking quick. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, awesome, because like I guess when you're running around doing all this logistic shit, you have a finite period where you're like, oh, cool, I can get smashed there, and then I'll be fine. But you don't think about that. Oh, I shall get smashed here, and I'll feel shit for the rest of the fucking thing. Yeah. And so me and me and this guy, I nearly said his name, then, we're smashing back fucking tequilas, and I'm like, yeah, blah. And I'm, by the end of the night, I'm staggering back to the fucking tour bus, and Lemmy's already on that, and he's, like, watching Family Guys. He always fucking did on the bus. And um, I'm walking back, and he said, like, this, this next bit comes from Lemmy. I don't really remember the next bit. But he was like, he was like, yeah, I could see you coming back out the window and blah, 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 blah. And, um, he said that I stopped, was chatting to some guy um, and said to the guy, like, oh, apparently fucking, like, you know, I said, oh, watch this and just threw a pole over his, this car. And apparently it was the guy's car and, then, and just went like, that's just my auto! And all this and I, and I was just, right? And I just went, apparently just went, choose and walked off, which is like, bye. 
then came <laughs> staggered onto the bus went oh right, then and just fucking tripped over and just headbutted this fucking table and was out cold <laughs> oh right. shit and then, like, that and... took a turn I thought it would have been the bloke that <laughs> yeah. had the car that knocked you in yeah no 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 <laughs> he was running scared, was just like oh like, and apparently I was like choose and ran off to the bus like, I think if that. that was framed right it'd be the perfect yeah. new quirky ad for uh, Volvo yeah totally you know right. what I mean yeah, just yeah, the yeah. guy pukes on the car and says bye yeah, yeah, totally and then right. it's just like Volvo drive your dream yeah exactly <laughs> you know I mean like it's such a laid back casual car that you're not even going to get bothered if anybody fucking screws on the hood of it right? like um yeah. so like, it's the new ad for windscreen wiper rubbers because yeah, it just yeah, cleans yeah, it totally like right. it's all done yeah. Yeah. Mate, you just reminded me of that fucking film what was it crazy people you ever seen that we do Dudley Moore no where it's just like realistic adverts and one of them's like yeah. Volvos they're boxy but they're good yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah well that's that's like um the um British humour that you're talking we were saying mm. about like that style of humour like it, from what I've picked up from interviews and things like that Lem was a big fan of that style of comedy which is why I think he might have been interested in doing that comedy gig that I spoke about yeah. before he yeah, seems yeah. like a, a lot fan. of his friends were comedians yeah like, so. especially at the rainbow like because I got I got a um, podcast I listened to by a guy called Dean Delray yeah. and he used to book the rainbow um, for, for years yeah. and um, he um, he talks about you know hanging out there and all that sort of stuff and he's a massive comedy fan he's yeah. an LA rocker that started doing comedy when he was 44 yeah, and, yeah. and he's in his 50s now and he like tours and stuff like that but he started doing music and now he's doing comedy yeah nice. and um he even said he's just like he's just because he stopped partying hard he said he went for, to, a, to a gig once um and there was like a pyramid of coke and all the guys from motley crew and stuff were there and he's just like man i he's an old la rocker guy He's just like, oh man, I had to fucking hook in or otherwise everyone else would get it. And he said, and I looked down and my fucking arm's going numb. And I was like, fucking hell, I had too much. And I went over to the guy that was running the party. I said, you need to call an ambulance, man. I think I'm having a stroke. And he's like, the guys are Motley Crue here. We can't fucking have any heat. Hands him a bottle of fucking Stolly and says, sip on this until you come down. <laughs> He's up in the bedroom rubbing his arm, sipping on the Stolly, hoping that it comes yeah, down. Back and, forth, and, yeah. and he comes down and he says, yeah, so, you know, I don't party anymore. You know, you stop partying. And he goes, and then I realized, I said, fuck, if I knew Lemmy was going to make it to 70, I never would have stopped. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, right? You know what I mean? Like, he had a good fucking innings, right? Yeah. But yeah, yeah. a lot of his friends were... Um, a lot of them like all British comedians as well, like and ones you wouldn't think of, right? Um, unless you kind of know his backstory a bit more. Like yeah. so I like the I don't know if you've ever seen any of the comic strip presents stuff and things like well, that, I right? With like that, bad uh, news. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so he was one of his like best friends was like Robbie Col Coltrane, which randomly is Hagrid from fucking yeah. Harry Potter. Yeah, right? yeah. And he used to come down to a lot of gigs and hang out. And it's because they'd work together on, I think, on Eat the Rich and a few yeah. other bits and bobs. And I've seen him play a cop in a show before. I'm just like, cracker. fuck it. Yeah, he does yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, cracker, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah totally. It's a gnarly big old cop, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he was did like, what, Nuns on the Run? I don't know. I've never seen that one. It's fucking terrible for him. Um, but uh, yeah, like, and so he was like, we're friends That's with, a with them. And, um, yeah. that, was that, so that would have been how he got the young ones thing? like was how, how did that sort of work because young ones was like early it was about 80 yeah so young ones like i grew grew up fucking loving the young ones and i think it was probably being rerun when i first saw mm. it and I'm yeah right because it's funny right. when you look at that episode they were on bambi if you look at yeah, everyone yeah. from to the, the from yeah but from the um you know when they're doing university challenge yeah yeah and if you look at everyone in there it's like it's ben elton and it's like all, yeah, all, 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 right, all right? of really yeah, yeah. yeah, so them are really mega famous now there was ben elton and that was part of the comic strip and i think they did the comic strip presents which is i don't know if, if you've ever seen bad news and more bad news yeah oh yeah, yeah all that yeah, stuff yeah, totally, yeah, um, that's my favourite quote from that. Is it? What is it? Uh, was it? Uh, Jimmy Page was twenty-two when he wrote "Stairway to Heaven." He's like, I was, I was nineteen when I learned to play. I think that says something. Yeah, <laughs> that's fucking brilliant. So good. And yeah. It's just sausages up there. It's so good. We used to say about it. So many fucking like bad. It was years, also but, in um, <laughs> in like, Californication as well. Them did that um, spot that in scene the rainbow, in, right? the, in the rainbow. Yeah, 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 I remember yeah. That. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like random cameos as well was really cool. Yeah, he used to do quite a few of them, like a few bits and bobs, right? And he also did. Uh, uh, and he, he was fucking huge. He used to piss him on. He was a huge bone of contention with him. He did a Walker's Crisps advert, which is like Smith's Crisps, yeah, here, right. Where he didn't, they didn't pay him 
Uh, but he all he asked in return was he wanted a life li- uh, a lifelong supply of salt and vinegar chips, right? <laughs> that and they never choice, delivered. They yeah. never fucking delivered because you can't get salt and vinegar in the states where he was living. He's like, oh fucking, because both me and him, our favorite meal of all fucking time is a salt and vinegar chip sandwich. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> and so we'd have one every fucking night on the bus, right? Yeah. And he'd be like, but then he'd go home or we'd tour the states and he'd be like, oh fuck, I just want some salt and vinegar chips. <laughs> but yeah, me too. Right? I heard the story about the hot chips putting them in the microwave on the van. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and he used to put it with fish as well. Like yeah. he'd fucking crank it up and he'd like. I'd be like, look, it's, it's a microwave, not an oven, right? Yeah. I'd be like, you know, you don't need to put it in for fucking 50 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> and he'd be stood there watching it like it's fucking, like he's watching the Jeeps of Hazard or something. It'd be like fucking, and it's just going around. <laughs> like, dude, like the entire fucking bus is filling up with smoke and stinking like fucking haddock. And you're like, oh, man. <laughs> like, um, it could only be described as a sea creature. Oh, right, sea creature. That was a camel, man. Yeah, that yeah. fucking bus driver. That yeah. bus driver was so fucking funny. Right. Um, I don't know if the, the, the preempt that I was giving the guy a Mexican workup as well, which we used to do to quite a few people. We had an acoustic guitar on the bus that I used to bring along. It ended up getting fucking smashed, which was annoying. But like, we if anybody was pissing us off, we'd go to their bus and be like, knock, 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 really like middle of like three in the morning, right? Like the worst hour you could pick. And we'd, we'd just stand there and go, dun, 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 you cunt! And I'd walk off, right? <laughs> like, like, so we did that to him a couple of times. And then the next day, we we were driving there and our bus broke down and, and me and Campbell were like, oh, fuck it, let's go for, you know, let's go for a wander. Um, and we ended up wandering, jumping over like the, I guess the safety barrier of a motorway and ending up in this little Italian village. And it had this like, like almost like a, a supermarket, but a, like a little scaled down version. And in the freezers that had uh, like octopus, I'm like, oh, fuck it, let's get a couple of these. We can fuck with people, put them in their bunks and blah, 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 blah. Like, so we got this and then, we put we got it on the bus, got back, and, and in all honesty, we completely fucking forgot all about it. Like, um, like, and and a few days later, this thing's honking, right? And this, so it's this perfect storm of like we've got this honking fucking octopus. This the the crew bus driver's really fucking pissing us off. Where we've got a few days off, and it was all everything aligned like this fucking like these planets of shit in a line, right? Um, and and basically what happened was we like knocked on the door the guy opened it and we just fucking tossed in this fucking like rotting octopus into his bus like, and he was just stinking like pure stinking and he and he's uh, like he he must have emailed the the owner of the bus company and said like oh, i want to quit this tour like fuck this like i want to leave them here like blah, blah. and it used to happen quite a bit right we used to you know i look back in it now and we used to the amount of letters that we get of people like you know fuck this band like we want to leave them here and blah, 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 blah. Like, um, add it to the pile yeah. yeah exactly right and he'd like uh he'd emailed the guy and he's like i was awoken by what could only be dis- like by described by being thrown at me uh what could only be described as a rotting sea creature on my website. <laughs> like, <laughs> and just like, Fuck. but yeah like but over the years like bus drivers but it, and we either got on really fucking well with them we yeah. like you know there was people like jonah and ronaldo and yeah and claire like you yeah. know and we used to fuck with them but not in it but in like a love way yeah. and then yeah. they could take it right like claire i even got i've got it covered over now but i even got a tattoo on my back that said fuck you claire because he woke me up with a vacuum cleaner one morning yeah. right? and i was like literally i was like he woke me up and i was like man i'm gonna go get a tattoo on else fuck you claire and i literally just went and got it and came out right? and his daughter loved it it was the best thing ever she was just like that's the best um but there was dry and so we'd we'd fuck with them from a place of love but then there was drivers if if you pissed them off pissed off the crew they would go out that way to probably fuck with, you, fuck right? with them yeah like i think the best one that I ever had, and it was before my time, and it was, Tim Butcher had told me. Apparently, they found there was a bus driver who was really fucking doing their head in. And they found outside a gig one night, like a mannequin, and they snuck it on the bus, right? And they dressed it up in some of Tim's clothing, right? And while the bus is driving along, they t- tied a fucking rope around its neck and they tossed it out the roof skylight so that it hit the front windscreen while the guy was driving. Oh, and, and he thought he'd hit somebody, and the bus is fucking swerving everywhere. And apparently the guy like never drove a band ever again. Like he, he quit. Just that yeah, scene. yeah, he quit and was like, I'm not fucking driving a band ever. But he ended up delivering fucking like glass bottles of fizzy pop around Glasgow. Like he was oh, just like, I'm never, I'm never fucking driving a band ever, ever again. He thought he'd like fucking kill uh, someone because he had awesome. smashed this exploded man. I, I remember a quote um, that I heard where it was basically like, if you, if you, so there was a few things that lem had like um requirements for the bus that needed to be cold the yeah, the needed to be, yeah yeah the ice man and um it needed to be running all the time yes 
Okay. So even when it was sitting there parked, it was just yep. it needed to be running. It used to help him sleep here in the engine or something. That's like right. That. Yeah, that goes dead back to his Holcomb days, right? Which was like, it, it, you didn't have plug-in power at yeah. venues, right? It's a pretty modern thing, and so is giving a fuck about the environment, I guess. Yeah, right? which is unfortunate, right? Because it's the world we live in. But like, for, so for him, it, it, the noise of the bus and the and the, the slight vibration of the engine was the only way he could fall asleep. Yeah, right. It was the only way he could fall asleep. Like, so if, if that turned off, he'd wake up, like, or, or whatever. Oh, yeah, you'd hear the dum, 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 and you knew someone was going to get showered up. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and he used to come out with some fucking classics, like, to the drivers as well, right? Like, like um, if it hit a pothole or a bump as well, that'd set him off from oh, what I totally, heard. Right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. The, th- the other thing that he could never get his head around as well, which used to crack me up, and, like, the drivers hated it, but it's... So in the UK, you can only drive a certain amount of time, then you need to take a break, then you can drive it a little bit more, and then every couple of days you need to take two solid days off. Yeah. Right? It's not just like, oh, you can just fucking... Like in the States, it's like, oh, you can, you can give the driver a bit of cash and go, right, we're in, we're in LA, we've got to be in fucking... We've got to be in New York for the next gig. Like, here's, a, here's some extra... Just fucking just do get it. Lo- loads of coffees just get us there. Like, you can't do that. They have tachographs in the yeah, UK. Yeah, well, they do them here too. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And so... He, he used to hear that the drivers would get a couple of days off because they'd be like, what the fuck? Because you'd have to, obviously, in that, like, you either get a double driver or you plan the tours around it. Yeah. 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 Um, and I remember Jonah, like, he'd, him hitting a fucking bump on the way out of the venue and he'd come stomping down going, fucking hell, Jonah. Like, what have you been doing spending the past couple of days reading a book on how to drive like a fucking cunt? Do you know what I mean? But then he'd go back and then now later come down and go, oh, Jonah, how's it going? Like, you know what I mean? Just like, it was the, and that's what, to me, like, I, and I still carry that with me in life today, right? Is you can explode and go fucking ballistic, and then everything's fine. Right? Yeah, yeah, Do you know it's what I mean? out of the system. Then, yeah, it's out it? the system, but, and, and, and to me, it's a huge fucking failing in my life now. Is that, like, I, people don't see that I don't give that much of a fuck that I carry it with me. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. I can be like, fuck this, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, like, what should we do there? Like, yeah, yeah. And it's, yeah, it's that weird ability to, and we used to have a saying as well, right? It's like the truck doors are closed. So during the gig, you can you could fucking fallen out with, like, the amount of times I had arguments with people like fucking Tim Butcher or blah, 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 blah right? But as soon as the truck's packed, it's, we're all friends. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? We're here now. It's yeah, we're all right there, yeah. The gig's done, right? I suppose that, you have to, otherwise it's all going to fall apart. Mm. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, totally, right? Or, yeah. you know, like, I'd have a You fucking, can't have a grudge, though. Yeah, you can't exactly, be right? And I think, right, yeah, you hit the nail on the head, right? And yeah. it, again, me being a fucking verbose prick, I could yeah. have just said we didn't have grudges. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> Instead no, of no, chatting for about five minutes. <laughs> well, it's like, it's like yeah. the, um, Jonah Hill has a joke. Uh, Jonah Hill? No, no, that's a fucking musician. Joan Rivers. There you go. Oh. See, I did your trick. I switched the name. <laughs> hey, was it Evil Knievel? No, he's a stunt writer. No, so Joan Rivers has this joke. She's like, you're married with someone until the point where you can just look at the side of the head when they're eating, the temples are going in, and that's enough to piss you off. Yeah. <laughs> you know oh, exactly, right. Because you're yeah. just looking at them going, of course your head's fucking moving, you yeah. can't. Yeah, I'll tell you. But that, that... <laughs> well, like, but that's what a grudge will do, right? Oh, whereas, whereas you can just... You can just if you like can get it out out in the open then you've said it and it's done yeah you know? and, and it's do you know what and honestly like i've talked with quite a lot of bands and it was quite rare yeah and it was quite rare to have that because it, it and and people um, who were there at that you know if you had that were there just for that flashpoint you'd go fuck me this is a really toxic environment yeah but the reality was is it wasn't because right? of that because of that yeah. yeah it was that ability to just almost like blow up and then laugh at yourself for blowing up yeah. and other people could laugh at you with it right yeah yeah like so and and you know there'd be times where on other tours where you could you know you could have i don't know, had an argument with somebody and they'd carry it over for fucking shows and shows and shows yeah and you'd be like, what the, what, like what's up with you oh you know what when we were in fucking leeds you blah, 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 blah. i'm like man that was like fucking two weeks ago like, yeah yeah so what you forget about? what you're like, mad about yeah, yeah, totally you have to right. remind them yeah, let go of it man like <laughs> you know what i mean um, like, so, Especially for Motorhead too, like you look at a band like that, they were just on buses always. They never yeah, got yeah. to that stage where they were like Guns and Roses and flying separate helicopters to each other. No, we met, we did have a fucking one. <laughs> so there was two things that we we did have. A, and yeah, you're absolutely right. For the majority of time, it would be we had have two two buses. So there was a band bus, which was the band and me, yep. and then there was a crew bus which was all of the rest of the crew, and there was two trucks, right? Yeah. And we'd occasionally have three trucks when we had the bomber with us. Yeah, because the bomber was a huge fucking thing, but like, um, 
It's the greatest stage prop of all time. Oh, totally, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so good, right? I got some, like, it went fucking, it was from a joystick, which was fucking weird, right? That's so awesome. you just fucking fly oh, about like that. Oh, you? you've done it. Yeah, I fucked around with it. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, so yeah. awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. So, and, 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 like, I don't want to go off you'll have to remind me what I was talking about a second ago but like um, <laughs> but with the bomber like Stefan was a prime example of motor crew and that he was so fucking proud to use the bomber right yeah, yeah. it was his pride and joy right <laughs> he'd be like oh man I'm getting the bomber out tomorrow right because only, only certain venues that you could use yeah, it right because it's yes. fucking huge and he'd be like oh, I'm so excited we're getting the bomber out we're getting the bomber the bomber's going to be here uh, right and he's, this is a guy who's done this like fucking 300 times yeah, yeah but yeah. it was like it was a new fucking like experience for him every time and yeah, that's, a prime yeah, that's, example that's the, the best group, man right? yeah. people have like, that kind yeah. of love he loved for it, him but, um, but yeah uh, what was oh yeah how we were travelling right there was times where we did occasionally get like and it was more through the promoter it certainly wasn't yeah, like you know yeah. I was going, oh, let's be all extravagant and get a fucking jet like yeah. it was um, there was a time in France where we got a private jet and there was a time, uh, I can't remember where it was, where we got a helicopter and me and Campbell said, never a fucking again. Uh, like, I don't know, if, have you ever ridden in a helicopter? No, I refuse to. They Mate, just look it was like... the <laughs> fucking worst. That's what I would Like, assume. I would never go in one ever, ever a fucking again. It was like being in Willy Wonka's fucking lift. Yeah. Like, it was the worst, right? Like, honestly, right? Like, me, right? me and Campbell, like, it was, like got in, it was like, yeah, yeah, cool, da, 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 and it went off, right? And it took up, and... and I said to the guy, I was like, look, we're, we're not super cool with this. Like, take it easy. And I think he was like, and this was the other thing, right? Whenever you'd say, oh, yeah, yeah, we're motorhead. They're almost like, oh, cool. I can act like a fucking cunt. Right? Yeah. It's, this thing took up and literally just dropped the nose and went forward like that. Oh, right? I mean, shit. Campbell, like, went straight to the back and we're hugging each other. Just going, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, and so you can't, you can't. Uh. Right? And then we had this private jet and we had a sound guy, Arnie, who was terrified of flying. Yeah. Right? And he was fine on bigger planes. And he'd been going through this like kind of hypnotherapy to get like kind of comfortable with flying, <laughs> but it clearly wasn't going well. Undo all the hard work. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Like he's like they had to restrain him, and did. he's like shouting, and he's like, "Land the fucking gun! Land the gun! Just fucking land it!" Man. Right, and it's like that's going on, and there's people taking selfies, going, "Hey, I'm on a private plane." And it's just like, "Oh, mate!" I was like, I was just thought it was all going to be fucking of emotion. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like, and I'm just there, it's going, "Oh, this is the fucking worst." Oh, shit. But yeah, we had some. So that's basically, insane, yeah, yeah, the 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 buses and the trucks were reliable and friendly right anything yeah. else outside of that comfort zone always went wrong <laughs> always lemmy, went wrong lemmy was really a creature of habit whether oh, that was 100%. from what i understand yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally right. whether it was his known spot was the apartment it feels like like when he wasn't in the apartment the bus became the apartment like he just needed a spot to be yes. alone yeah, 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 it's totally what right. i understand yeah. the, you know like i always tell people i work for ian kilmer stuff yeah right He's a very, very different person to Lemmy from my head. Yeah. Okay. Very, very different person, right? Like, as much as he's the only musician I've ever worked with whose everyday clothes are his stage clothes, right? Yeah. That's a very different thing. Like, most bands are like, hey, uh, you yeah, know, especially like metal bands, they're like, oh, mm. you know, they'll walk in with jeans and a t shirt and they're like, right, where's my spandex? Yeah, yeah. Da right? Danny Filth doesn't sit on the lounge wearing fucking yeah, spandex. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Lemmy did, right? Yeah, yeah. The only way you knew he was casual, he was he'd take his shirt off. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, the Daisy Dukes, man, that story about oh, that. Uh, oh, uh, who was it? I think Scott Ian. I think it was yeah. Scott, Scott Ian. Yeah, husband. spoke that story on the thing. Yeah, yeah, that that was that was good. He used yeah. to make some like you know like and it's you know the, the people go oh, you, you, know, you can't talk about it, blah, 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 blah. but he did make some pretty fucking bad fashion choices. Yeah. Like, I remember him walking up and he's like, oh, I've got these new glasses. I'm like, fucking hell, you got cataracts fixed or something? Like they were like these fucking like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, man, what's going on? Like, um, and, uh, like, <laughs> A shout out to Ray Charles, you know, just yeah, to homage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, 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 the way he's singing, singing it, like, he's, the shit, he's in the shit. remake of Blues Brothers <laughs> yeah. or something, the piano scene. Yeah, I don't know. Imagine right. that Lemmy on the piano playing blues with the fucking yeah, with big, big glasses on. Glasses. There is a couple of pictures kicking about with him on, oh, man. But it's like, oh, fuck, that's man. good, man. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, he was definitely a creature of habit, right? Yeah. And and he was very. Um, like insular like yeah. in the way that you know that he had his very small circle that he trusted yep. implicitly right um and then he you know and, and i'm sure back in the day like before my time working with them he was a fucking like hellraiser and all of sure. these things that he was well known for right yeah, yeah like um and i think that wasn't so much raising hell it was having a good time right yeah 
Do you know what I mean? And I think, uh, but by the time I met him, he was, you know, an, an, an avid reader, loved history. Yep. Like, very, like, you could have a really good fucking conversation with him about anything random. You know, like, I remember chatting with him for fucking hours about steam locomotives. <laughs> Do you know what yeah, I mean? Really like, we're just chatting about steam locomotives. And, like, um, really knowledgeable on lots of topics, right? Yeah. And, and like, I, without going too fucking deep or fluffy or whatever, is, like, I encountered Lemmy at a time in my life where I was kind of a fucking mess and I learned a lot from him right? yeah. on how to conduct yourself yeah like how to be respectful how to like you know oh a lot of these lessons actually came to the surface after I'd finished working with him and I'd sorted yeah. myself out but like you know he was he knew when to be Lemmy from my head right, right. Yeah, yeah and I could t like we got to the point of working so closely I could tell from a look in his eyes or a raise of his eyebrow who I was dealing with right? yeah yeah and so you know an example is you know when we were filming for that Lemmy movie um when when metallic were around yeah you know he's letting me from my head yeah yeah Do you know what i mean we get back to the bus that night and it's even killed us yeah like, different yeah yeah so there's there's times where you know he's he pulled that little bit of ego and i'm not saying that he he didn't thrive on being that ego sometimes do you know yeah, what i mean yeah like, yeah I used to I used to have a saying it's good to be king, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, and and because for him it's, it's like good yeah, to be I'm, God, I'm, yeah, he's like I'm king of the fucking castle, here, right? Do you know what I mean? Well, like, he's God in most people's yeah, minds. Totally right. he's, Lemmy is God. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He, he was good mates with Phil Linnett, and Phil Linnett was apparently a lot like that too, wasn't he? Like, yeah, you'd go around to his, people would say you go around to his house at three in the morning, he opens the door like he's just walked off stage, and that was just. It was, it was just him, right? It was, it was just, just his personality. Just yeah. And, yeah. Yes. and, and you could see and, how those two get, got on so oh, well. Oh, totally. Yeah. 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 One of the first people I actually met when I was where, first working for Motorhead was Phil Linnett's mum. Yeah, right. She used to come to every Motorhead show in, in like yeah. Dublin and stuff. And I didn't realise she ran like a guest house, apparently. Yeah, so right. that's where all the touring bands used to come and stay. So they're all, he's really, I think her name was Philomena. Philomena Linnett. Yeah, right. Right. and and she had had this little guest house where she'd come all the bands would stay over and they, she used to come to all these different shows and like a like really lovely woman absolutely lovely woman and that's what i mean it's like there's you there's this let me from my head who has this you know this rock and roll spit and sawdust da, 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 right and then there's this ian kilmister who likes you know invites one of his best friends mums to gigs and they yeah. hang out and mm. they do it years years after he's unfortunately passed away and da, da, da. you know what he was yeah. you know there's this almost like uh, either end of the spectrum kind of personalities right and then somewhere in the middle is where he's yeah I, d I do have some specific questions people have written in we'll keep it fairly brief just so that we can touch on them because i know that i'll cop it if i don't go just run through these four yeah. um i know we've both got stuff we all have things to get to later and i could talk to you for hours mate this has been a really good episode so far like it's been really good to to get through some of the finer workings yeah. of it but um we'll we'll run through a few of the formal questions um yeah. and yeah then um so that i don't get my balls dragged over the coals for not fucking asking them all right yeah yeah, yeah that's fine <laughs> oh yeah, yeah all good yeah um all right so i've got one i've got one of four um what's the um what's the longest time some of these are personal questions like you may may know um but yeah what's the longest time that lemmy spent playing video games on tour you mentioned he liked to watch family guy did he play games while he was out as well yeah he did yeah yeah so we used to um always have game systems on the bus yeah um uh and also i used to bring a laptop with me where i used to have i don't know if it still fucking exists i think called meme yeah yeah uh, yeah, yeah so i had meme on my laptop and i used to have a little snes control a couple of snes controllers and we used to play fucking mario kart non-stop um <laughs> and so yeah i met staunch fucking ghost valley three crew right yeah yeah, I mean, yeah. Let me both, both fucking ghost valley crew nice right yeah. um and so we used to play it's the most that. metal one yeah yeah, 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 yeah. totally right and it's the, the the opportunity to use the feather right yeah and yeah, you do yeah. the thing so that is yeah um and so yeah i used to play a lot of video games but it, i guess the question is more around vlt video games yeah or, probably yeah yeah, yeah, yeah right? most likely. um i've once spent some time in vegas with him where he 
played for quite a few days fucking solid. Yeah, right. Like, non-stop fucking solid. Like, to the point where I pretty much had to fucking drag him out of there by his cowboy hat. Yeah, yeah. I was like, fucking come on, man. Is that yeah. going to win soon? I'm like, no, no, no. You yeah, like, you playing, really playing, the, playing the one-armed band, bandits yeah, and yeah. shit Yeah, yeah. So we call yeah. fruit machines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? The yeah. fruities are, like, between me and him, we used to call him the electric mistress. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> I mean, you're just going to lose as much money on the fruit machines. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. right? Yeah, it's like, yeah. Oh, I'm just going to go take the electric mistress out on a date. Yeah, yeah. Like that, right? You know? I'm going to see what she's got under her little fucking LED lit petticoat. Yeah, like, yeah um, nice, nice. Which is normally fucking nothing. Um, but like, yeah. Um, so yeah, he used to do that quite a lot. And, and days, you know what? Yeah. It was, yeah. Like, uh, but pretty much every night we'd yeah. go, we were pretty, like you say, it was a creature of habit. So we'd do the gig. We'd then probably go to a strip club and we'd end up at a casino. Yeah. Right. Um, and it was always the, the fruit machines. Like he never played, like it, well, when I was with him, I never saw him play um, cards, cards or, anything. or roulette or any of this fucking yeah, shit. even he fucking hated the Ace of Spades by the end of it, probably. <laughs> no, no, I'm just joking. But yeah, like, totally. you know, I'm See, weirdly, to... like, it's, uh, you should, people used to ask him that question, oh, do you fucking hear this? He was like, do you know what? A lot of bands get stuck with terrible fucking one-hit wonders. Yeah, right? Because yeah. at least we got a good one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, <laughs> but... That's what he used to say, right? I, I, mean? I, was, I was trying to tie the card game true. to yeah. the song, yeah. but like, you imagine know what I mean? Imagine being fucking yeah. Tina Turner having to play Simply the Best every fucking night. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. fuck me, right? Imagine going into, like, a shopping centre and hearing your song, you can't escape it. You know what I mean? Like, at least, at least it's a... It's a bit like um, I'm a fan of ZZ Top and, um, you know, there's not a song that you can do to death with any bands that I really like, you know? Like, yeah. you, like I can still hear Ace of Spades and the countless hours I seen, heard that song playing Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 yeah, um, yeah. and it was on repeat in that game, like, pretty much. Yeah. And yeah. I still can hear it and go, yeah, that's good. And I, I like that, yeah, that's a good point. I didn't want to do that question to death because I've heard it before. Are you sick of your favourite song? Yeah, yeah. And, um, but, yeah, that was, was there a song um that you preferred like was it did you have a favorite motorhead song that you yeah did, i've got that, two yeah um snaggletooth yep one of my favorites um and i had it as my ringtone for a long long fucking time like um and it's just it's just a really good song there's some good lines in it you know i'm gonna raise a roof uh yep. speed dot kill and i'm the proof <laughs> yeah, yeah fucking great lines <laughs> yeah um it was a great lyricist lemmy yeah stuff, totally yeah. right and i think a lot of people missed out on bits of his humor in mm. there right and are now picking it up in the new generation like, actually that's quite funny right that's especially, a good play on words especially that's a good another, play. another perfect day yeah that album's yeah. so underrated if you listen i reckon he did his best lyrical work on that and i, I often wonder if that was because of the thin lizzy connection with brian robinson coming yeah. in and they held Phil and him held Thin Lizzy in such high regard. Yeah, I just felt like they both really lifted their lifted, lifted their game. Their game yeah, yeah, tell you, you're absolutely right. And you, yeah. the, the humour in back at the Funny Farm, just the one-liners in that are just brilliant. Yeah, They're just so well yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. like some of his little kind of yeah. plays. If you want to get a little. beautiful girl, you're gonna have to use a Mastercard. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so good. It's like, such a fucking. Yeah. Good. But um, yeah. I've got I've got another one here. Um. As, um Sorry, just so quickly, oh, my favourite yeah, yeah. song of oh, all yeah, time yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah. is like quite predictable, but it's Overkill. And I oh, fucking yeah. live it on so many reasons, right? Um, firstly, it's just one of the best fucking kind of punky metal songs ever written. Yeah. Right? Just that the bass sound, all of that. But it was also the last song of the set every single gig that I ever worked for Motorhead. Yeah. So it's what they would close with. Yeah. And so it was almost that. And man, even just talking about that, I felt my shoulders go, ah. Right? Because, you just because it's the end of the night. Yeah, it's right. the end of the stressful part of a night. Yeah, yeah. Right? And so, if it and as they as that ends, there was that huge cacophony of noise that Hobbsy always used to do, and we'd be walking back to the dressing room, and it was like, all oh, right, cool, let's do some fun shit now. Yeah, you know? the yeah. job's done. Yep. The important tick the boxes have been done. So yeah. Yeah, the bills are paid. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, Again, you've summed up my fucking three minute ramblings in one line. That's good, man. I'm a, I'm a translator between you and the yeah, guests. Totally yeah, right. that's, that's the host's yeah. job, isn't it? Yeah. Love, it. <laughs> um, Love it. Okay, welcome back. We've got another couple of questions. Thanks for listening so far. Um, I've had heaps of fun with this one, and I uh, hope everyone out there is having as much fun listening as I'm doing. Um, there it is. Uh, just keep you on your fucking toes. Um, 
I could straighten that up for it's prosperity. Gaff, mate. <laughs> I, tell you what's fun. I wish I could say that's going to piss off the person editing this podcast, but I'm the geezer that does yeah, it. Yeah, so yeah. Fucking, yeah. Gonna, I'm, I'm, all I'm saying is that's going to piss me Fixing off in the future. Yeah, yeah, totally right. <laughs> Get Amy from the future having yeah, to edit yeah. with this fucker. Um, <laughs> but yeah, anyway, we've got a couple more questions. So in his prime, um, how many bottles of Jack did Lemmy go through a night? Now, that was the original question. I want to reiterate that. During your time yep. with Lem, What's the um, what's the most you've seen him consume in one night? Um, or what was he? Let's start with what his standard was, and was there ever a time that he went over that? And I remember Ozzy Osbourne in the documentary said, "I never seen Lamb incapac- incapacitated from any anything. Yep, so I've never seen him drunk. Yeah, I've seen I've seen him when he'd done a bit too much speed. And yeah, you could always and, and little kind of thing. You can always tell if he's on stage and he's got chewing gum. That's when he feels he's done a bit too much speed." because he's trying to stop his jaw going. But yeah. Like, um, but yeah, now in terms of Jack would be, um, he uh, catering used to put in there one of the big bottles every day. Yeah. And he'd go through that. Yeah. But he also had like, so we had a flight case, or I said we, Richie the caterer, used to have a flight case that was full of Jack Daniels and full of Marlboro Red cigarettes. Right, yeah, And yeah. so there was never a like time. Like in Leaving Las Vegas where he opens the suitcase and all the bottles fall out. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? yeah. Well, imagine that suitcase scaled up to being about a couple of fucking metres long. <laughs> Holy <laughs> like, shit, right? yeah, yeah. So it'd have strong bar cider in it. Thinking, basically, it was a fucking party wagon, that thing. Yeah. Right? Um, <laughs> like, um, but yeah, so I, he used to go through one of those, but he'd always like... He'd make one, and this sounds a weird way of saying it, but he'd make one drink that would last him the whole day because mm. he'd be constantly adding ice to it and constantly, like, topping it up. Topping it up and he'd slowly be going through it, right? Nice. He was only having one a day. Yeah, yeah, he's only having one a day, right? And it's almost like, I don't know if you've ever seen, there was an old British comedy called Only Fools and Horses. Well, he's yeah. talking about his brush and he's like, yeah, I've had this brush for 25 years. It's only had like fucking 10 new heads and it's yeah. had fucking 25 new shafts. Yeah. And he's like, but it's lasted me so long. It's the same right? and, it's the same, right? it's and that's the mindset he had. He's like, I'm only sunny one drink. Yeah, yeah. Right? But he keeps topping yeah, it up yeah, and topping yeah. it up, right? It's like when we bought our first, when dad bought the family home and he renovated it. Yeah. He says, oh, the bank can't foreclose on it because the house that they own's gone off in a skip bin. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly yeah. Yeah. This is all my shit now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit, yeah. Yours has gone to the tip yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly right <laughs> um, so probably i think you're like 1.5 liter ones or maybe 2.5 liter ones the big ones like yeah. the, the ones that are big enough to have the label upside down because they should be in an optic yeah yeah oh, but that shit. would also be tapped up by me popping in going fucking hell mate i need a drink and he'd be like yeah here you go or butcher coming in and going oh, i need a drink or you yeah. know somebody visiting him that'd be topped up but then we'd get back to the bus and there'd also be one stored on the bus right yeah okay. um, and then there'd be drinks that we'd have out going out so i guess he yeah he used to drink a fucking lot right yeah um and he was hard to keep it took me a, a few tours to fucking get up to speed right yeah. because he used to <laughs> speed's a terrible point yeah. but like he'd uh <laughs> he'd like he'd wake me up in a bit officially my job would be to wake him up right but a lot of the times if he'd been up all night he'd wake me up right and he'd come up and he'd be like boy boy i am like, yeah, yeah, what's up? I'm like, you awake? I'm like, well, I fucking am now, aren't you? Yeah. Right? And he'd be like, and he'd have a strong drink and a fucking lit cigarette. He'd go, there you go. And then it, that's when the drinking would start. Yeah, and it right. it would be nonstop. And any time I'd go into his dressing room, it'd be like, oh, this, you know, there's some press coming up. Uh, but he'd be like, oh, stay around for a drink. Right? And it, you could never argue with him because yeah, you'd be yeah. like, you'd be like, oh, you know, I'm really fucking busy, Lem. I've got to fucking go and do all this. And he'd be like, yeah, yeah. Who do you think runs this show? <laughs> and he'd be like, yeah, you. And he'd be like, well, sit down and have a drink then. And so, yeah, like, yeah. and then you'd have to deal with the knock on effects of that. But you'd be like, you know what, you're right, mate. Let's just have a fucking drink. Just, yeah, At the end of the day, chill. like, we're all doing this because it's real job avoidance. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. It's like, we're doing this because none of us want to be fucking plumbers. Let's face it, right? Like, so it's, you know, there was you that. can't picture Lemmy rocking up in, like, all right, so what am I here for to, like, fucking replace the taps in your kitchen? Or Do you know something? what? His first ever job was in a washing machine factory. Oh, really? Yeah, and he used to say it a lot, right? So we'd be, like, I remember, you know, we'd be out drinking and people, it was always the place that people would come up and be like oh you know i'll buy you a drink i'll put your drink behind the bar and so after being there for a little while he'd be surrounded by these fucking free drinks and for him it was mutually beneficial not only did he have enough free drinks for him but he could give free drinks to girls as they went by right? yeah yeah and so like uh and he says he'd lean over and go it's far better than working in a fucking washing machine factory yeah <laughs> you know I mean? it's his catchphrase yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah when they finally put out that fucking doll they'll pull the string on the back and that's what it'll say yeah right? yeah, totally right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah um but um yeah so yeah a lot of drink yeah a lot now um 
we we did cover a lot of the tour stories, so that one's mm-hmm. all all good. I'm happy. I think that whoever wanted to know the tour stories would not, has a plethora of shit to to listen <laughs> to for that. Um, and then also, you you mentioned about Lem's generosity and how much mm-hmm. he was willing to give stuff away. You just um, spoke about drinks and that. What's the most um, generous story that you ever heard from t- t- tour with with Lemmy giving something away? Um. I think there was probably a, a ten-year period where he paid for probably every pair of fake tits in Los Angeles. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, so yeah, you know, the girls are coming to him at the rainbow. Oh, let me, you know, I just want to do this and this and this, but I'm just so flat-chested. And he'd be like, "Yeah, there you go. <laughs> like, just let me see him first when you get back." But yeah, there you go. And so, <laughs> what like, a yeah, unit! There you go, right? And so there was a period where he used to do that, but he was just generally like, you know, um, he was super generous in the way that yeah. he, you know, but not just generous financially as well, right? Generous with advice and generous with fucking like care which to me is a huge currency right like uh you know he he was never one where his door was never it, 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 it's to say, his door was always fucking closed but his door was never closed if you knocked on it right yeah yeah Do you know what i mean if he needed if yeah, you needed yeah. him he'd help yeah, yeah so he was very generous in the way that you could go in there and vent to him in a way that he wouldn't speak to you as being like oh, actually well this is my ship that i'm running he would speak to you as a mate he'd be like oh fucking hell blah, blah, blah. you have a drink and he'd sort you out in ways that's like do you know what i mean like if a mate saw that you'd had a fucking bust up with your girlfriend yeah like you, you'd chat to them they wouldn't necessarily be like oh right cool well, let's go out on the fucking pole then do you yeah, know what i mean like yeah. they'd be like yeah, yeah. oh well you know like let's you can vent to me maybe like that and then but i guess mon- monetarily which i'm guessing is what that question's about um He'd buy like guitars for people a lot of time. Like he'd buy, like I say, a lot of tits. Um, <laughs> um, he'd pay for you know what? He'd pay for me like out of his own out of his own pocket to stay in LA with him yeah. a lot because um, he would he'd say, "Oh, I need you here for this." For a prime example would be the headcat tours. So I'd work for him for headcat as well. Yeah, um, which. Motorhead doesn't pay for like yeah. you know there's no reason why that should be coming out of Campbell's pocket or Mickey sure. G's pocket yeah yeah right? um and so he'd be like oh you know I've, I've booked you into this fucking hotel it's, you come and help me and he'd pay me out of his own pocket to come and help him on the headcat tours right yeah which was some of my favorite fucking tours right because it was doing tiny tiny venues yeah and that would have been great for him to yeah, get yeah he back loved to that it level, he absolutely know? loved it right it, there was no fucking stress like for me it was quite stressful because obviously like unintentionally he's got that standard of crew delivery yeah but yeah. there's just me right <laughs> like this you know my yeah, crew yeah. was huge right and they're all seasoned fucking veterans yeah, right? but yeah. then there's just me like and i'm yeah. having to change bass strings well so, so it was quite stressful sure yeah and yeah. it was you know part of the catalyst of where i eventually went you know i'm kind of done with this but like um those, he absolutely loved those shows because the ability to be, you know, playing his bass here and fans where you're right sitting there. now was incredible. Yeah. Right? And, you know, there was times where he just literally came off stage like, that's one of my fucking favourite gigs I've done in years. Mm. You know? Mm. And he was playing with, you know, Slim Jim and, and Danny B. Harvey and stuff, which he loved as well, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, so um, I want to close on something I wrote um as a sort of like a closing um question slash point that i wanted to say yeah um i recently re-watched the lemmy doco um you're in it and oh it's a movie the lemmy movie um and at the very end you said something this, the question must have been along the lines of like you know how do you think lemmy would like people to remember him something along those lines and you were like look i don't i, I don't think he wants people to be sad i think he'd prefer yeah. it more to be more of a party and this is like um in 2011 now let me pass away in 2015 um was it that was it what you wanted it to for me personally what, what you think he would have liked you know as, as a celebration of him or how how do you mean for me personally or as in the wider response um f- for yourself personally. Uh, for me uh it was a weird fucking day it was a weird fucking day like i was originally contacted by wes the guy who did the movie yeah. And he was like, look, I don't know if this has broken your side yet, but, you know, Lem's passed away, da 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 And I chatted with him, I was like, all right, cool. And then, you know, and, and well-meaning people, um, and I'll put, like, I'll fucking double underline that, well-meaning people, like, who I who I knew as friends would try and almost latch on to that a little bit. Yeah. And, you know, it's their link to that celebrity death. Yeah. Whereas for me, I was like, I, you know, I ended up, 
turning off Facebook for a little while, turning yeah. off Instagram for a little while, because sure. I was just getting ping, 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 and it's like, oh, I want to be personally linked to this. And I'm like, yeah. well, you know, and maybe that's me completely fucking misinterpreting. Yeah. And it was all well wishes, right? Yeah. Um, but it was all like, what do you think about this? What da 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 And I'm like, I don't know. Like I've, you know, I'm actually sad because one of my friends has passed away. Sure. I'm not sad because yeah, a musical yeah. idol's passed away, right? Yeah. Um, and for me, you know, it had a hard couple of years, right? Yeah. Like, um, you know, I have my own personal opinions on that, but like, um, I think generally, I went to the pub is what yeah. one thing yeah. that I did on the day I died. I went yeah. to, the, to the Stanley Arms in Norwich and I just drank a fucking Jack and Coke on my own and was yeah. like, fucking, there you go, gaffer. I think like, I think um, Jack Daniel sales went up like real heavy on that day. Yeah, uh, yeah just, uh, we still yeah. at the bar. So I work at a bar in in, in Belconnen. It's a metal bar. It's called yeah. the Basement. They do other gigs there, but it's primarily um, metal. Yep. And uh, we still make Jack and Cokes under the name Lemmy. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, yeah. Uh, like if someone comes up and orders a Lemmy, that's one of the first things we'll teach bartenders if they don't normally work in, in pubs that have metalheads working there. Yeah, yeah. You need to know what that drink is. We don't do cocktails. We don't fuck around. We don't put umbrellas in drinks or anything. Yeah. But if someone asks for a Lemmy, you've got to know what to, what to get them because that's your most common yeah. mixed drink that you're going to pour there. Yeah, so when we when we used to make them on, on the road, it was three fingers of Jack, two fingers of Coke. Yeah, right. Right, and then a shit ton of ice. That's 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 a proper lemmy from from yeah, the yeah. Uh, from yeah and and within the crew it's known as a schwally ran, randomly mm. so, oh, I fancy schwally yeah, right. and yeah I think that came from butcher I don't know the history of it but that's what it was known as yeah <laughs> but no, that's good to go full circle man I, it's good to get um like the follow up um sentence from that original interview that you, that was part of that doco and a yeah. lot of people that are going to be watching this have probably seen that movie um and yeah it's good good to um. Good to get you back on and, and have oh, no, chat. Oh, no, no, you're welcome, man. Yeah, I know it's I, hard I think, to right, talk. It was, at the time, it was like for that interview, I think like I remember thinking um, it was a weird question at the time. Like, And it almost didn't compute. I remember like I think it was Greg who asked me it and I'm almost like, well, that's never going to fucking happen. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Right? Yeah. And it's yeah. like, and, and do you know what? Fucking kudos to them to asking those questions. Right? Yeah, yeah. They had the foresight to do that. Like, and, yeah. You know, and so yeah, isn't it? Isn't it an interesting question? But yeah, like yeah. looking back, it's yeah, that was a mad time. It, it's it's hard to talk about um, anything you know that isn't just happy times. But it's always good to remember that you know that's how everyone wants to remember Lemmy is like the, the what he did for the scene and what he did for everybody around him and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And I think people yeah. like yourself chatting about stories and stuff help spread oh, that totally. good like, news. Some of my favorite stories about him are from people in bands who. Like, you know, they went on and they made it, but they, they, they say stuff like, oh, do you know what, we're playing this festival and we were like first on and, you know, I saw Lemmy playing pool and so mm. I went up and chatted to him and I ended up fucking playing pool with him for three hours and chatting about music. And yeah. Like, he was just that sort of dude, right? Yeah. He didn't give it like, and most of it was through pure, not ignorance, but pure fucking, he, he didn't know what a lot of the music scene was doing most of yeah. the time, right? Yeah. So like, you were either a fucking nice person or you weren't. And if you were a nice person, you got... He, he would open himself up to you and he sure. would fucking all of those things, right? And I think that's what he'd want to be remembered for more than anything, right? Is just being somebody who was fucking receptive to genuine, nice human beings. Right? Yeah. Because he would, he had that really good fucking bullshit radar. Yeah. And you could tell, like, he, you know, there was bands like the Jim Jones Review. Met him for the first time. I think he ended up, they ended up going out and supporting my at some point. But, like, first time he met them, he was just fucking blown out with them all night, you know? Just fucking yeah, chatting yeah. out and just, like... Yeah. Because they, they clicked. They had a common a common bond which is a love of music you know what i mean yeah. So, yeah yeah man we'll we'll wrap it with that thank you very much for taking the time and having a chat um hey, I'm uh and you've got uh, we mentioned before you've got um uh some some clips on youtube i've seen under um god's pa that's the channel and also you've got a book coming about coming out talking about your time um yeah so the book we've actually changed the title um, it's not called God's PA anymore, yeah. so it's called Wasted Opportunities. Okay, yeah. Um, which I kind of liked a bit more because not only did I waste many opportunities on tour, but there were opportunities to get wasted. Yeah. Um, and so yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. And so we've kind of widened that out, and yeah, that's coming out on Fracture Originals uh, later this year, which is we're just finishing up now. It's an exciting point where all the illustrators are working on it. So yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much for being on the show. Thank oh, you for co-hosting yeah, with me, Sean. Right. Uh, Excellent. Good. That was really yeah, good. Yeah. Cheers, Boom. man. Yep, yep. Good stuff. <laughs> thank you, everyone, for listening. I appreciate it. It's been a little while since we put out the more sporadically now, and this has been the best time to put out another episode. So cheers for coming on, and cheers, everyone, for listening. Thank you. Cheers. Sweet.